Half Tilt is the game of fancy jousting, where teams of knights face off in search of honor, glory, and unimaginable riches. Today, we zoom into Gourmet Castle, the most prominent in all of Shortreach. Lances will be broken, knights will be unhorsed, and legends will truly be forged. Playing Half Tilt couldn't be simpler, and we're sure the players young and old alike will be able to enjoy the wackiness that a match of Half Tilt brings. But first, each player will need a team. Before the match can begin, both you and your opponent will need to agree upon a renown level. The higher the renown, the bigger the match. For an average game that will last about an hour, we recommend starting with 10 renown. Once you've both agreed upon the size of your match, it's time to enlist your knights. Each combatant has their own renown level to add them to your team, so it's simply a case of adding knights until you reach the agreed upon renown limit. There are very few limitations when it comes to team building in Half Tilt. You cannot include a single knight more than once, and you may not add a knight to your team whose renown level is equal to or higher than half the size of the match being played. Other than that, you're good to go. Now we come to setting up the Noble Tilt Yard. You'll find all the terrain and miniatures to get you started inside your starter set. Here's some I prepared earlier. It's really important to remember that you don't need a lot of space to play half tilt. Any old flat surface will do! We've painted our terrain and miniatures using our own TT Combat paint range, which you can find on our website. The Knight Card Each knight has their own knight card which contains all the rules to use them in the tilt yard. Here you'll find the knight's renown, jousting skill, glory, endurance, allocation boxes, traits, both generic and unique, and keywords. Taking a look at Sir Rooksborough's card here, you'll see that he is one of the higher renowned knights in the starter set, but oh boy does he have the skill to back it up. In the allocation boxes, you will find information telling you what abilities your knight possesses when it comes to making rolls. Which brings us to... Action Checks! While playing Half Tilt, your knight will be required to make various action checks. To do this, they will roll the dice that have been allocated to an allocation box. More on this later. Here, Sir Rooksborough is rolling five dice. He selects one of the dice to be a base score. Then, for each other dice that rolled a 3 to 5, he gets one success. Any 1s and 2s are discarded as failures. Finally, by adding together the dice you selected, the number of successes and the modifier shown in the allocation box for the test being rolled, you receive your final score for that test. These scores are then compared against your opponent's score to see what happens during the game. Some knights have symbols in their allocation boxes. An arrow shows the knight may re-roll a dice during that action check, while a dice symbol shows they may add one dice to that roll for free. Ploy Cards Inside your starter box you'll find a deck of ploy cards. This deck is shared between both players. It can include as many cards as you wish, but only one of each. Each card is broken down into triggers, requirements, and outcomes, which detail when a card can be played, the terms for its use, and how it changes the joust. At the start of the turn, each player draws until they're holding three ploy cards. These cards can either be played or used to stoke the crowd. At the end of the turn, a player can discard any unwanted ploy cards. To play a ploy card, players must announce the trigger of the card they want to use when it is met. Their opponent may then play a ploy card with the same trigger if they have one. Once all cards have been played, resolve any outcomes listed. It's worth noting that each player can only play one card with the same trigger each turn. Round 1 Now that we've covered all the nitty gritty, we can get to the main event. At the start of the round, both players secretly select one of their knights, simultaneously revealing and then moving them into the tilt yard, awaiting their chance of glory. A round continues until either one knight is eliminated or three impacts have occurred. The Allocation Stage At the start of the Allocation Stage, both knights gain a number of dice equal to their jousting skill. 
Players allocate these dice in secret between initiative, strike, and block. Initiative dice are used to make initiative checks, strike dice make strike checks, and block dice make block checks. There's no limit to how many dice you allocate into any one box, however you must put at least one in each. While this is all going on, players may also select any number of ploy cards in their hand and use them to stoke the crowd by placing them beside the tilt yard. Once a knight has accumulated three cards in this way, you may move them to the discard pile in order to gain your knight one extra glory. Once all dice are allocated, both players reveal them simultaneously. Now that all allocated dice have been revealed, both players secretly select one of the approach cards they have available and place it face down next to the tilt yard. Each approach card has a different effect that will allow you to react to your opponent's tactics before the carnage begins. Both players reveal their approach cards and make any changes listed on them. Both knights now make an initiative check using the dice allocated into initiative. The knight with the higher total has initiative this turn and gets to move and strike first in the impact stage. If initiative is tied, then neither knight has the advantage. Starting with the knight with initiative, both players alternate moving their knights one square at a time, clockwise down the tilt grid, a number of spaces equal to their initiative score. If, during the move, the two knights occupy opposite spaces, an impact occurs. The knights move no further, and any movement not yet taken is saved as momentum. If initiative is tied, move both knights simultaneously. Once an impact has occurred, it's time to come to blows. Starting with the knight with initiative, both players take it in turn to make their strikes. To make a strike, the attacker makes a strike check. Once the strike score has been established, the defender must make a block check. Compare the strike score with the block score. For each point that the strike score is higher than the block score, the defender suffers one damage. If the block score is equal to or higher than the strike score, then the blow has been successfully blocked and no damage is done. For each damage that the defender suffers, they lose one endurance and one momentum to a minimum of zero. If a knight is reduced to zero endurance, they are defeated and eliminated from the joust. But if initiative was tied, they may still yet take their opponent down with them. After all impacts have been resolved, knights may use any momentum they have remaining to continue their movement, potentially closing the distance again. Through skill, speed, or dirty tactics, it's also possible for a knight to catch another. If this happens, they win the round, automatically gaining a point of glory and causing the losing knight to lose two endurance. The Resolve Stage in the resolve stage, if an impact occurred this turn, each knight must make a resolve check. Unlike when making an action check, to make a resolve check, the knight rolls 2d6 and adds their remaining endurance. If the score is 10 or greater, they pass, but if not, they lose endurance equal to the amount they fail by, meaning the more beat up a knight gets, the more likely they are to yield. If a knight has been eliminated, either by being defeated or running away due to a failed resolve check, the victorious knight may roll to see if they gain glory from the crowd. How easy this is depends on the renown difference between the two knights. If one knight has been eliminated, or if three impacts have occurred in the current round, then the round is over. Both knights now have the choice of returning to the stables, or continuing the joust. A knight may only spend a maximum of two consecutive rounds in the tilt yard before they must retire to the stables for a refreshment. They may, however, be brought back in later in the match. Winning the game! At the end of each round, players count up the renown of all knights from the opposing team that have been defeated. If this is higher than half the size of the game being played, then that player has won. If both players have achieved this, usually due to a double knockout, then the player with the higher total is the winner. If both players have the same score, continue play until this is not the case. We hope that gives you an insight into the game of Half Tilt and the carnage that awaits you in the lands of Shortreach.